Now we're going to start down through and look at our single cylinder uh, misfires as well as multiple cylinder misfires. Now we're going to start with our primary ignition. We could have started other places, and you can jump to another part of the program if you want to start with fuel delivery, fuel control. But let's talk about the ignition. Now, we're going to show you a lot of patterns as we go through here. What we recommend is that you make a recording and play it back frame by frame, or at least freeze it so you can study the details. These patterns are sometimes happen so quickly that it's difficult to see them on the scope display. And you need to understand the ignition first, because before we start talking about this particular part of the pattern or that particular part of the pattern and the problems they cause, we need to understand the nature of the problems. So we're going to start with ignition coil basics. Now, the ignition coil is a transformer. It's a step-up transformer. It has a power rating. It's going to transfer power from the primary over to the secondary by using magnetic coupling. And it's 98% efficient, which means we have a 2% loss. And that's not unusual. But let's start by looking at the drive power. Drive power coming in is 14 volts at 7 amps. Now, power is voltage times amps. So that gives us 98 watts. While on the other side, we have output power. It's 98 minus 2%, which gives us 96 total watts. If the secondary resistance and spark gaps require 14 kV in order to get a spark, the amperage of that spark will be 6.3 amp, milliamps. It's milliamps times volts to come back to the same 96 watts. It's the same situation. What we have in is what we get out. Now, that's an important thing to understand because the secondary is a power-limited circuit. It is powered by the primary. If something goes wrong, it's a problem. The voltage in the secondary also controls current flow. Because if we have resistance in the secondary where the voltage requirement is way high, like 40 kV, we're still power limited and current will drop to 2.4 volt, 2.4 milliamps. That's what we mean by a power limited circuit. As the voltage increases, we have less current flow. We have a weak spark. We're also going to wind up with a weak spark if we have a situation like we have here where we have low input power. In this particular case, we have 14 volts at 4 amps. That gives us 56 watts. This low current is going to result in a weak spark on the output side. Now let's take a look at the output side. We have 56 watts minus our 2% loss. That gives us a total power of 54 watts. At 14 kV, requirement to get a spark hasn't changed. The secondary resistance is the same. But as a result, the low current in the primary results in a weak 3.9 milliamp spark. What we're making a point of here is you've got to test both the input and the output. Low primary current or high secondary resistance can reduce spark current, resulting in a weak spark, which is how we get a misfire. Now, you can pick either side you want to start testing, but we're going to start testing the input side with a low current probe. Now, a low amps probe is sometimes faster to connect than the secondary adapters. And we want to make sure you understand that. But start, we're going to start with the low amps probe and talk about it, utilizing it with a digital storage scope because we need to see the pattern. But let's talk about this low amps probe and what it does.
It produces a low voltage signal by detecting the magnetic field strength produced by current flowing through the wire. It's a direct, it is converting this into millivolts. Now, if you have a low amps probe designed to work with your lab scope and you have a lab scope setting for low amps probe, you will read this out as amps. If you're adapting a low amps probe to an other scope that it wasn't made for, you're probably going to have to set a millivolt scale and use the scale on your low amps probe. It will tell you how many millivolts per amp you're looking at. And that's the way you're going to make a measurement. Let's start talking about how we're going to connect and how to utilize a diagram to understand connections.